Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For these holy hours and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who enter it, for, uh, for this parish and city, for every city and town, and for the faith who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, and the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion, and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> Ότι 
ίσον το κράτος και σου έστειν η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του Πατρός και του Υιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματος νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Εξομολογησάστο σαν σιτά ελέη αυτού και τα θαυμάσια αυτού της εις των ανθρώπων. Φθαλμή Κυρίου επί τους ελπίζοντας επί το έλεος αυτούς. Σώσον η Βασιλιά Θεού, ο Αναστάς εκ νεκρό, σάζοντας η Αλληλουία. Του ακούσε του στεναγμού των πεπαιδημένων, του λύσε τους Ιούς των δε In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Father, bless the holy entrance.
Spirit, born of the Virgin for our salvation. Let us, the faithful, give praise and worship. Of his own will he mounted the cross in the flesh. He suffered death and raised the dead by his glorious resurrection. We venerate your holy icon, loving Lord, asking you to pardon our transgressions, Christ our God. For you of your own will were pleased in the flesh to ascend upon the cross, so to deliver from the bondage of the enemy those whom you have fashioned. Therefore in thanksgiving we cry aloud to you. You filled all things with joy, our Savior, when you came to save the world. Together, please, with our, church, with our choir, the hymn of the church on page three. Blessed are you, O Christ, our God, who has shown forth the fisherman to be most wise by sending down upon them the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. Holy God, you dwell among your saints, you are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn and glorified by the cherubim. And worship by all the heavenly powers, you brought all things out of nothing into being. You created man and woman in your mission likeness, and adorned them with all the gifts of your grace. You give wisdom and understanding to the supplicant, and not of the sin, and you establish repentance as a way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and unworthy servants, to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar, to offer you worship and praise. The master, accept the thrice holy, and all suffer the lips of us sinners, and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and involuntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant that we worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives. By the intercession of all the saints who believe throughout the ages. Oh, no. 
God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal, Glory Heavenly to the Lord. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and to the ages of ages. Um, Holy Mortal, have mercy on us. Let us be attentive. You, O Lord, shall keep us and preserve us. Save me, O Lord, for the godly man has failed. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment, treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And what more shall I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? 
you shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Good morning, please be seated, and our church school students, please come to the front. Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm glad you're here today to share that with us. So today, I'm going to start with a can you identify this little uh, exercise. So ready? If you know what this is, raise your hand. Yes, sweetheart. It kind of looks a little bit like coral, maybe, but it's actually not coral. Does anybody know? Yes? Hmm? Did you say barnacles? Yeah. Yes. Good job. I heard somebody whisker barnacles over there, too. These are barnacles. And guess what? We're going to use barnacles today to learn about our Lenten theme. So our Lenten theme is on the front page of the bulletin. Somebody hold it up for bulletin for me. Hold up your bulletin, Arlene. Okay, so our Lenten theme is, read that. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And that is actually from Psalm 50 in the Septuagint numbering, or 51. And the whole verse is, create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you. So what does that have to do with barnacles? I brought a barnacle expert today to teach you something about that. Ted Stewart, one of our diaconal candidates, is actually a Navy veteran. So I was getting ready for my barnacle message, and I said, hmm, I wonder if somebody here has actually had real experience with barnacles, and Ted has. So, Ted, can you tell us a little bit about why, what happens when barnacles get on a ship? When barnacles get on a ship, it reduces the efficiency of the ship going through the water, so it creates a lot of drag. So we want to remove those. Okay, so here is a ship with barnacles. So this was a close-up to kind of fool you. But this, look at that. Can you believe that? That is a ship that is filled with barnacles on the bottom. How thick do you think that looks? Like quarter inch, half inch? Mm, I think it looks like a lot deeper than that, doesn't it? That's a lot of barnacles. Look at the size of this ship and look how, and they just keep, it goes through the waters, keeps collecting, collecting. Ted, why do they stick so well? They stick so well because they have an adhesive um, component to them and as they go through the water it actually creates a stronger bond as they uh, attach to the ship. Okay, so that's what a ship with barnacles looks like. What's that? That's a clean ship, right? That's what the ship is supposed to look like. It just goes whoosh through the water, not right? So it's going smooth right through the water, beautiful, clean, right? So how do you think you get barnacles off? Before Ted tells us, how do you get them off? You can scrub, right? But scrubbing, like let's say you take one of those scrubbing pads, right? What do you think would happen if you scrubbed and scrubbed a barnacle? Look, do they look, look at these things, huh? Who said it? They're sharp, right? They're really sharp. It would probably tear into pieces. So, Ted, tell us about this one. Look at this. They utilize a sharp object. It's a scraper, and they actually just go and scrape the uh, barnacles off the uh, bottom of the ship. Okay. So you actually just, I mean, that's, is that easy or hard? Very hard. Very hard. Very hard work to get that. Imagine a ship, like, bigger than this church. Imagine how many barnacles are on there, and they have to get them off, right? Scrape, 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 scrape. All right, 
let's go back to our Lenten theme. What does the barnac what do barnacles have to do with create in me a clean heart, O God? Anybody have an idea? Let's start here. Yes. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. May I have the microphone? That's just too precious. I have to get you on record with that. Say that again, sweetheart. The barnacles are your sins. The barnacles are your sins. Good job, Mommy. Thank you. Okay, so, so the barnacles are... This is what we look like a lot of times when we just... How, how do the barnacles get on the boat? It's just going about doing its daily business, right? You know, a couple attached, then another couple attached, and another couple attached. Pretty soon you forget about the first ones because they're covered over with other ones. So the barnacles just keep attaching and attaching and attaching. Next thing you know, the boat's lumbering along. And it's not doing too well and seeding up a lot of fuel. What do we want? So, and by the way, <clears throat> in here, the barnacles are sins. What are they attaching to? Hmm? Your soul, and I'm going to use today, our heart. Because that close relationship with the heart and the soul. All right. So imagine your heart. Everybody put your hand where your heart is. Imagine that heart and crust it over, and crust it over so hard that it can hardly even beat, right? That's what we're going for. That's what we're trying to do with our heart, especially, and our soul. And how do we then, what tools does the church give us to scrape off the barnacles? Let's have some, let's have some suggestions. What, how do we scrape the sins of the barnacles, of barnacles of sin off our souls? Prayer. So one thing is prayer. You know, if you get one or two little barnacles on, I bet Sophia was right, you could probably, Lucy, sorry, you could probably scrape it off, scrub it off a little bit. Not after it gets 10 or 12 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 on, though, but a little bit you could do. So every day you can scrub those barnacles off with prayer. What's another one? And Lent is a great time to do that. So what's another one? How's another way we scrape the barnacles off our soul? Hmm? Come on. Yes, Andrew? Oh, yes, Mitch. Going to church. Coming to church is a great idea because we can pray in church, we can worship, we can, a lot of good things happen to us in church. Andrew, what's another one? Confession. Okay, again? Confession. Confession is a great one. Confession is the big, the big scraper. I mean, it goes chomp, chomp, chomp and just gets rid of them all, right? That's a really, really good one. And you don't have to wait until it looks this bad. So you're going to come Holy uh, Saturday Lazarus. You don't have to wait till then. You can see Father Radu, see Father, see me. We can do that anytime you want to. You go to camp and you go to confession or retreat. Some of you are going to the Gory Retreat. The Hope and Joy Kids as well. Everybody, our adults, all are welcome to come and have the barnacle scraped. What else? It's another way. Yes. Fasting. Fasting is another good way. There's a lot of tools, aren't there? There really are a lot of tools. It's not just one. Sometimes you need a big scraper. Sometimes you need a little scraper. Sometimes you need a long handle. Sometimes you need a short handle, right? Sometimes maybe you need a curved one to get it around the, uh, the, the screw or something of that sort. So what else? One more. Let's go for one, one more. Yes. Communion. Holy communion, that's right, which just like washes them away in the most miraculous way that you could possibly ever imagine. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. And I'm going to teach you. Thank you, Ted. I'm going to teach you a little... Oops, nice, let me hold on for a second. Sorry. Okay. So let's see. This one and this one. All right. So many of you have been to summer camp and retreats, and you have learned a special song that is from Psalm 50. You know what it is, don't you, right? Create in me. Say it. A clean heart. What? Oh, Lord. So there's a little translation difference. I mean, the psalm actually says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. But for whatever reason, the song we sing at camp is, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. So let's just stick with what you know, okay? But understand it means the same thing. So who knows it? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Who knows it? Come on. Come on. Everybody? You all know it, don't you? See? I know you know it, right? All right. Let's turn around and let's do it for everybody because we're going to... Here's what we're going to do. Turn around. We're going to show your parents and everybody here today how you go from this to this. And you do that by asking God to clean your heart in all the ways that we just talked about. So let's try it. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. 
and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. A little louder, a little louder. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. You know it. You know the song. You know the teachings. It's written in your heart. God bless you. So for the rest of the Lenten season, I want you to remember every morning when you wake up, our Lenten theme, besides your other prayers, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And if you want to, sing the song. It's right out of the Bible, letter for letter, verse for verse. And what a beautiful thing that you have that written in your hearts. So I invite all of you, confession, communion, church services, prayers, let's get those barnacles scraped off. Let's not end up at the end of Lent looking like this. Let's be standing with our, thank you. Let's be standing with our resurrection candles, bright, shiny, clean, and ready to glide through the waters of life by the grace of God. Okay, thanks. Please rise. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let's pray to the Lord. No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach to our near ministry to the King of glory to serve you as great and awesome even for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord of all entrusted celebration, lest the church will be sacrificed without the shedding of blood. You alone, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant. Cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable and by the power of your Holy Spirit, the vest of the grace of priesthood, I may st stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. If you I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor reject me from among your children, but make me your sinful and unworthy servant. Worthy to offer you these gifts through Christ, our God of the offer and the offer, the one who receives and is distributed into you. We give glory together with your eternal Father and your holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who, we who mystically represent the cherubim, Sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all, invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come, let us worship God, our King, and bow down before Him. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. Behold to the cross. Joy has come to all the world ever. Blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection for enduring the cross for us. He has destroyed death by death. Have mercy me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to your multitude of ten mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I turn with my transgressions and my sin is ever before you. Against you, you only have I sinned and not done, which is evil in your sight, you be found justified when you speak. And blame with me, O God, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin and not to wash me, I should be white and still. You should make me sounds of joy and gladness that those of your birth may rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Holy Spirit, O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall be praised, desired sacraments. Sacraments of God's broken spirit. 
broken, contrite heart, O God, you will not despise the good you good pleasure designed work for us. May the Lord our God remember those who love us and those who hate us. In peace, lift up your hands to the holy places and bless the Lord always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord ascends with a cry of command and with a shout of the trumpet of God. Pe voi, pe toți, să vă pomenească Domnul Dumnezeu într un părăția sa, totdeauna, acum și pururea și în veci vecilor. May the Lord God remember us all in His kingdom, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in His kingdom, always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in His kingdom. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in His kingdom, always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. During the Sundays of Lent, we use the Divine Liturgy of St. Basil the Great rather than John Chrysostom. They are largely the same. The big difference is some of the internal priestly prayers. If you have the, the larger Divine Liturgy book, the green one, those have the additional prayers in for you to read along, and there are places during the service where it says, during St. Basil, skip to this portion. So you will, uh, I will, they will also be read so you can hear them, but uh, though it takes uh, a bit more time in between some of the hymns. Please use that time, as we talked about for the children today, to pray, invite the Lord to create in you a clean heart, scrape the barnacles of sin off, and spend time in fellowship with Him. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. 
for the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For these holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, rob, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an, angel. For an angel of peace, the faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Amen. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls, and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, you created us and brought us into this life. You have shown us the way to salvation and bestowed upon us the revelation of heavenly mysteries. You have appointed us to this service by the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant therefore, O Lord, that we may be accepted as servants of your new covenant and ministers of your holy mysteries. Accept us as we draw near to your holy altar according to the multitude of your mercy, that we may be made worthy to offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood for our sins and for the transgressions of your people. Grant that having accepted this sacrifice upon your holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, you may in return send down upon us the grace of your Holy Spirit. Look upon us, O God, and consider our worship, and accept it as you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the burnt offerings of Abraham, the priestly offices of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. As you accepted this true worship from your holy apostles, accept also in your goodness, O Lord, these gifts from the hands of us sinners, that being deemed worthy to serve at your holy altar without blame, we may obtain the reward of the faithful stewards on the fearful day of your just judgment. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Peace be with all your spirit. Let us love one another, that we may with one mind confess. Strength, Lord, is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Christ is in us, and he was, is, and always shall be. Τας θύρας, τας θύρας εν σοφία πρόσχομεν. Στο ευώισεν ο Θεόν, Πατέρα, πάντος ράτωρα, πληθή του ουρανού και γης, ορατών τε πάντων και αωράτων, και εις ένα Κύριον Ιησούν Χριστόν, τον Υιόν του Θεού, τον μονογενή, τον εκ του Πατρός και εν θέντα προπάντων των αιώνων. Φως εκ φωτός Θεών αληθινών, εκ Θεού αληθινού γενή θέντα, ουπή θέντα, Ο μουσιόν το πατρίδιου τα πάντα γένετο, τον δίμας τους ανθρώπους και δια τη μετέραν σωτηρίαν, κατερθόντα εκ των ουρανών, και σαρκωτέντα εκ πνεύματος Αγίου, 
και Μαρία στη Σπαρθένου και εν ανθρωπίσαντα, στα βροθέντα τα υπερημών επί ποντίου πιλάτου, και παθώντα και τα φέντα και αναστάντα τη τρίτη ημέρα κατά σα γραφά, και ανεφθώντα ει του ουρανού και καδεζόμενων εκ δεξιών του πατρό, και πάλι ενερχόμενων μεταδόξει κρίνε ζώντα και νεκρού, ούτε τη βασιλεία ούτε έστε τέλο. Και ει το πνεύμα το άγιον, το κύριον, το σώπιον, το εκ του πατρό εκπορευόμενον, το συμπατρίκη ο συμπροσκυνούμενον και εσύ το ξαζόμενον, το λαλίσαν διά των προφητών. Η Ισμία, Αγία, Καθολική και Αποστολική Εκκλησία, ομολογώ εν βάπτισμα ει άφεση των αμαρτιών, προσδοκώ ανάσταση νεκρών και ζωή του μέλλοντο αιώνα. Amen. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke to the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in all, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. All things are subject to you. You are praised by the angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, the powers, the many-eyed cherubim. Round you stand the seraphim, one with six wings, another with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying out to one another with unceasing voices and ever-resounding praises. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying, You sent forth prophets, you performed mighty works by your saints who in every generation have pleased you. You spoke to us by the mouth of your servants, the prophets, announcing us the salvation which was to come. You gave us the law to help us. You appointed angels as guardians. And when the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, through whom you created the ages. He being the splendor of your glory and the image of your being, upholding all things by the 
word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal with you, God and Father, but being God before all ages, he appeared on earth and lived with humankind. Becoming incarnate from a holy virgin, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, conforming to the body of our lowliness, that he might change us in the likeness of the image of his glory. For since through man sin came into the world, and through sin death it pleased your only begotten Son, who is in your bosom, God and Father, born of a woman, the holy Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, that those who died in Adam might be brought to life in him, your Christ. He lived in this world. He gave us the precepts of salvation. Releasing us from the delusions of idolatry, he guided us to the sure knowledge of you, the true God and Father. He acquired us for himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Having cleansed us by water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death in which we were held captive, sold under sin. Descending into Hades to the cross, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the bonds of death. He rose on the third day, having opened a path for all flesh to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible that the author of life would be dominated by corruption. So he became the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might himself be the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat at the right hand of your majesty on high, and he will come to render to each according to his works. As memorials of his saving passion, he left us these gifts we have set before you according to his commands. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable and life-giving death, on a night which he was delivered up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy and pure hands, presenting it to you, God and Father, and offering thanks, blessing, sanctifying, and breaking it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it, offering thanks, blessing, and sanctifying it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and you confess my resurrection. Therefore, Master, we remembering his saving passion and life-giving cross, three-day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and throne at your right hand, God and Father, and his, second glory, and his glorious and awesome second coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Das act on son si prospero men catapanda, kethia panda. Please bow your heads and remain bowed to the end of the next hymn. Therefore, most holy master, we also your sinful and unworthy servants, whom you have made worthy to serve at your holy altar, not because of our own righteousness, for we have not done anything good upon the earth. But because of your mercy and compassion, which you have so richly poured upon us, we dare to approach your holy altar and bring forth the symbols of the holy body and blood of your Christ. And we pray to you and call upon you, O holy of holies, that by the favor of your goodness, your Holy Spirit may come upon us. And upon the gifts here presented, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O Theos, last to me. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. To, me, to bless, sanctify, and make this bread to be the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the life and salvation of the world. Amen, amen, amen. And unite us all to one another who become partakers of the one bread and the cup and the communion of the one Holy Spirit. Grant that none of us partake of the holy body and blood of your Christ to judgment or condemnation, but that we may find mercy and grace with all the saints who that ye have throughout the ages and please you. Forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. Thank you. 
Remember, Lord, the presbyters, the diaconate in Christ, every holy, every order of the clergy, not confound any of us who stand about your holy altar. Visit us with your goodness, O Lord. Manifest yourself through us, us, to us through your rich compassion. Grant us seasonable weather, fruitful seasons, gentle showers upon the earth, that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year of your goodness. Present, prevent schism in the church. Pacify the raging of the heathen. Quickly stop the uprisings of heresies by the power of your Holy Spirit. Receive us all in your kingdom and to declare us to be sons and daughters of the light and of the day. Grant us your peace and your love, O Lord, for you have given all things to us. Above all, remember, Lord, Lord our, our Archbishop, Archbishop and Father Savas, grant, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. And may the mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord for the mercy for the precious gifts offered and consecrated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them and is holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar, as an offering of spiritual fragments. Many returns and done upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Heaven, pray for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit. Let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. God, the God who saves, you teach us to justly thank you for the good things you have done and still do for us. You are our God who has accepted these gifts. Cleanse us from every defilement of flesh and spirit and teach us how to live in holiness by your fear, that receiving the portion of your holy gifts with a clear conscience, we may be united with the holy body and blood of your Christ. Having received them worthily, may we have Christ dwelling in our hearts and may we become the temple of your Holy Spirit. 
Yes, our God, let none of us be guilty before these, your awesome and heavenly mysteries, nor be infirm in body and soul by partaking of them unworthily, but enable us even to our last breath to receive a portion of your holy gifts worthily as a provision for eternal life, an acceptable defense at the awesome accept, uh, dread judgment seat of your Christ, so that we together with all the saints who throughout the ages have pleased you may become partakers of your eternal good things which your Lord have prepared for those who love you. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say... Our Father, and to say... No, 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 just... Just... Nothing, nothing. Paterimon, o endis oranis, aies tito ton amasu, el teto i vasiliasu, ieni tito ton telimasu, o asen uranoke e petisis, ton artemimon ton fiusion, dosim in simron, ki afis mita o filimata imon, o aske imis a fiemen sferestis imon, ke mi isen ingi masa speras imon, ala rise imasa pato poniru. O ti suesti ni vasilia, ke dinamis ke doxam, Tu patrois che tu iu che tu ai iu pnevma tos ninti ai che es tu se onas to ne onon. Peace be with all and with your spirit. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. Lord, Master, Father of mercies and God of every consolation, bless, sanctify, guard, fortify, and strengthen those who have bowed their heads to you. Distance them from every evil deed, lead them to every good work, and make them worthy to partake without condemnation of these your most pure and life-giving mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and the communion of your Holy Spirit. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, who art here, so holy brother, place of the Come and sanctify us, let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God be merciful, God be merciful. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken and distributed, broken but not divided. He is for every eating yet never consumed, but he sanctifies those who partake of him. believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation, because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, 
and the pledge of future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place him in the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as a thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal kingdom. My brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me a sinner. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal king and God. To me, John, the unworthy priest, has given the most precious holy body of our Lord and God, the Savior Jesus Christ. For me, Jesus Christ. Please forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner. Glory to O God, glory to O God, glory to O God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. We hold to the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death.
sosa. Good morning. Because of the Sunday of Orthodoxy and the special procession we will have with the icons today, we uh, ask for a slightly different communion procedure. I'm going to ask all of the church school students to please come forward first. So everyone else, please remain where you are. Children, you may go ahead and get into the aisles here. Please allow them to come first so that they may receive and go, and they'll go to their classrooms. You will all then get ready for the icon procession and you'll come back in and wait in the narthex. And then once the last of the children has gone, then we will have everybody else come forward one row at a time as dismissed by the parish council. Thank you for your assistance. Doesn't matter. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near. Servant of God, Matthew, this is the God of Matthew, the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Son of the Lord. The Lavani of the Lord is the Lord, and the Lord is so much given to the Jesus of the Lord, and the Lord is so much given to the Lord. The Servant of God, Nina, this is the God of Matthew, the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Son of the Lord. The Lavani of the Lord is the Lord, and the Lord is so much given to the Jesus of the Lord. The servant of God, John, receives the body of God of the Lord Jesus Christ for the use of sins and life everlasting. The servant of God, Helen, receives the body of God of the Lord Jesus Christ for the use of sins and life everlasting. The servant of God, Melissa, receives the body of God of the Lord Jesus Christ for the use of sins and life The servant of God, Matthew, receives the body of God of the Lord Jesus Christ for the the servant of God, Mark, receives the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness and sins and life everlasting. The servant of God, Petrus, receives the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. The servant of God, Calabani, Gulti, Thero, Evangelia, Zucara, 
Wash away, O Lord, the sins of those commemorated by your precious, precious blood through the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all the saints. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving an awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path, establish us firmly in your fear, guard our lives, and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and do we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. And do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, 
to the armed forces and to all your people for every good and perfect gift is from above coming from you the father of lights to you we give glory thanksgiving and worship to the father and the son and the holy spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Please be seated. At this time, as the children prepare for the procession, we'll conclude the liturgy at the end of, the, of that and the message today. But I'm asking our parish council to please fill this time a little bit usefully by passing the trays. And they're going to do that right now. And we thank you for your donations in support of the ministries of Holy Trinity Church. Also, they'll walk up and down the aisles and give you the service booklets for the Sunday of Orthodoxy. They are in the back of the Pangati there, George. If you could make sure that we go ahead and hand everybody one of those so you can follow along with the procession. Thank you for your patience. While we, oh, are they there? Hmm. We re, sounds like they're there. We good? Let's bring them right up the center aisle. Okay, please rise.
по вас. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy <coughs> together. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our Archbishop and Father, Savas. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God, all pious and orthodox Christians living and visiting in this city, the parishioners, council members, contributors, and benefactors of the church, every ministry of this parish, and the donors and benefactors of this holy church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For you are merciful and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Again, we pray for the blessed memory and eternal repose of all pious Orthodox Christians <coughs> who have fallen asleep in hope of the resurrection and to life everlasting, emperors, patriarchs, bishops, priests, deacons, hierarchs, deacons, monks, monks, nuns, fathers, forebears, grandparents, great-grandparents, parents, spouses, children, siblings, and all our relatives from the beginning until the end of time, and for the forgiveness of all their sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Christians, Christ our God, and to you we give glory with your eternal Father and your holy good life creating spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Let us pray for pious and orthodox Christians.
Let us pray for our Archbishop and Father Savas. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of all pious and Orthodox Christians living and visiting in the city, the parishioners, members of the parish council, and for every ministry of the parish and the donors and benefactors of this holy church. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we give glory. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Accidental death, that our good and loving God may be merciful, gracious, and favorable to us by turning and keeping from us all wrath and sickness, and deliver us from his rebuke, and have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Hear us, O God, our Savior the hope of all those who live everywhere on earth and those far out at sea and in the air and be gracious towards our sins, O Master, and have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God. And to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. The Synodicon, or the 
Synodal Proclamation of the Seventh Ecumenical Council after having debated the challenge against using icons in the church and affirming them unto the coming of the Lord. As the prophets beheld, as the apostles have taught, as the church has received, as the teachers have declared, as the world has agreed, as grace has shown forth, as truth has been revealed, as falsehood has been dispelled, as wisdom has become manifest, as Christ has awarded. Thus we declare, thus we affirm, thus we proclaim. Christ, our true God, and honor his saints in words and writings, thoughts, sacrifices, churches, and holy icons. On the one hand, worshiping and reverencing Christ as God and Lord, and on the other, honoring his saints as true servants of the same Lord of all and offering them proper veneration. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith of the fathers. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is a faith on which the universe is established. Therefore, with fraternal and filial love, we praise the heralds of the faith, those who with glory and honor have struggled for the faith, and we say to the champions of orthodoxy, faithful emperors, most holy patriarchs, hierarchs, teachers, martyrs, and confessors, may your memory be eternal. May their memory eternal. Memory Let us beseech God that we may be instructed and strengthened by the trials and struggles of these saints which they endured for the faith even unto death, and by their teachings entreating that we may to the end imitate their godly life. May we be deemed worthy of obtaining our requests through the mercy and grace of the great and first hierarch, Christ our God, through the intercessions of the glorious lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, the divine angels, and all the saints. Together, please, the great Prokimenon, our church school students know it, please join them along. Who is so great a God as our God? You This is the victory of orthodoxy and the proclamation of the icons. You're showing, some of you are showing the saints the floor how pretty it is. Let's show everybody how pretty the saints are, how much we honor them. Let's give it the last one with all our hearts. Don't close your, cover your faces. We want to see your icons too. Hold them up high. Hold them up high and let's see your faces. Who is so great a God? Just to show that these aren't just things that we do just because they're orthodox or just because we do them, we want to know, we want your parents to know too, how, uh, uh, wh who do you have there? So do me a favor, hold your icon up and tell me who you have. Who is that? Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia. Who do you have there, Ilya? That looks like Saint Savas, I think, right? Saint Savas. Who do you have? Saint Spiridon? Mm -hmm. Saint Spiridon. Saint Spiridon. Saint Sophia. Saint Sophia. Uh, I'm not seeing uh, what? Annunciation. That's the Annunciation. That's the Annunciation. Okay, hold it up there. Let's see. And who do you have? Zacharias. 
Zacharias. Why do you have Zacharias? I don't know. That's your saint, isn't it? Yes, it is. Who do you have? Panagia. Panagia. Virgin Mary and Elizabeth. Virgin Mary and Elizabeth, a very special one here. Who do you have? Saint Urania. Saint Urania. Why do you have Saint Urania? That's my name. That's your name. That's your saint. Special one very here. Here, who's that? Saint John. John. Saint John the Baptist. That's right. Uh, we did St. Spiridon already. Oh, very nice with the girls here, the ladies. St. Sophia. St. Sophia. Why St. Sophia? It's my, it's my middle name. That's your middle name. Beautiful. Oh, you have over here? The Panagia. The Panagia. And she's being held by who? Anna. Anna. Why do you have St. Anna? Because that's my grandma. That's your name. You're honoring your saint. And, and, say, and uh, Anna? The Holy Trinity. You have the Holy Trinity, the hospitality of Abraham, just like the big one up there. Who else? Who do we have over here? Who do you have there, sweetheart? Turn around. Say Panagia. Can you say Panagia? Panagia. Panagia. You have the Panagia. That's right. Uh, and who do you have? Uh, Helen. 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 Eleni, right? What's your name? In ba What's your baptismal name? Uh, Eleni. 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 That's right. Who's over here? Oh, this is very special. Who is that that you're holding? What's your baptismal name when you come for communion? Mm. Cassiani. Cassiani, and that's who you're holding up so everybody can see. That's St. Cassiani. She wrote a very special hymn. And let's see. Oh, who do you have there? St. Elias. St. Elias. Why are you carrying St. Elias? Because that's my um, baby. That's your baptismal name. That's right. And the newest saint of all in the entire church today is? St. Paisios. St. Paisios, just newly proclaimed not too long ago. Beautiful, beautiful, everybody. What a great lesson it is to teach everybody how you honor your saints with your names. Thank you very much. Let me have you process right back out to your classrooms for your lesson today. Go ahead. And you all may, as soon as the icons are done processing, you may be seated. Should I give them a second here? Beautiful job. Eleni, one more time. Do you not you need to leave your robes in the altar. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We just honored symbols of the faith. We had our children carrying icons around, and as I tell every church tour that comes through here during the festival, and we talk about how beautiful all these icons are, icons are not idols. We do not worship icons. They are symbols, and they represent, and the honor goes to the saints, and worship goes only to Christ. But this is not a symbol. What is normally in this chalice, and by the way, for safety's sake, it is empty right now. But what is in this chalice is not a symbol. 
I'm going to take you back to a day at summer camp in 1985 when at Antiochian Village in the outdoor chapels, I was just a, uh, excuse me, 1981. Um, I was just a college graduate, and I had been recruited as a summer camp counselor. You learn a lot of things at camp. Some of them are challenging lessons. Someone gave a talk about communion. Now, I grew up all my life as an Orthodox Christian. I had the priest come out every Sunday with the fear of God. Well, but those days it was Greek. We knew that we had to fast. We knew that we had to get ready. And that back in the day, didn't happen very often. It wasn't my mother's or Yaya's or anybody else's fault. That's just where the things were in the day, in the early immigrant days of the church in America here, which by now was almost 60 years ago. So it was almost kind of a reward. You did the right things, and then you went and you got communion. But during this talk, the person presenting talked about communion as the body, the very body and true blood of Jesus Christ. And I kind of freaked out. Because I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it is the body and blood of Christ. So, we didn't have the Sunday school lessons in those days and the, and the, the summer camps and retreats and the things that the kids learned today. In fact, most of it was Greek back in the day. It was very hard to even find stuff to, to read. And so, believe it or not, I'm, I'm just offering you a confession that up until my early 20s, if you had pulled me off the street and said, is what's in this chalice the body, very true body and blood, the actual blood of Jesus Christ, physically, spiritually, really, I would have had a hard time confessing or believing that or defending that. But in that one presentation, I, was, I had my back put up against the wall. I'm like, hold on there. You mean I... I have to believe this if I'm going to be an Orthodox Christian. And so I did a lot of research. I looked in books. I tried, I tried everything I could to find things from the Orthodox Church that proved that this was only a symbol and it wasn't really the body and blood of Christ. And I couldn't find anything. But that wasn't the biggest challenge that I had with communion. The biggest challenge came because I eventually had to reconcile that. I found the good writings in my search to try to disprove it, I ended up proving it to myself that communion is indeed the body and blood of Christ. And so the bigger challenge came after the end of camp, after I enrolled in seminary, after I did all sorts of field work and so forth, and I actually then applied for ordination and got ordained. And at the end of the ordination, there sits this chalice. Now, I had only ever, like you, had a teaspoon. That's it. Sometimes a little bit, sometimes a little bit bigger, sometimes more liquid, sometimes not as much. It's all I had ever had in my life. If you had added all of them together in those 28 years, whatever it was by then, I wouldn't have even filled half of a cup, right? But now I'm sitting there standing, and a priest, a, a kindly senior priest who was at my ordination, takes me over to the prothesis, the table at the side, is at the end of the liturgy. It was now my job to consume the entire chalice that was left. Sometimes there's a little bit, sometimes there's a lot. For an ordination, they saw a lot of people were going to be there, and there were multiple chalices. It was a pretty big, like there was a pretty decent amount left. So I had to look at that chalice Hope that I could stop trembling because my hands were literally shaking as I was reaching for it. He said, don't be afraid. This is what we do as priests. And so I had to look in and say, now do you believe? Do you really believe? Not just theologically and not just ecclesiastically, but you're about to finish a cup that just had, I don't know, 100, 200 people commu uh, receiving communion out of it. There's no other cup in the world I would ever near, near my mouth that 200 people just 
sorry. <laughs> so I really had to look in and say, do you really believe? And so I finished the entire cup. And I had to learn how to carefully wash it out. And I had to clean the entire inside. I had to make sure that afterwards I washed my hands and my lips so that the, what I believe and what the church teaches is the body and blood of Christ was not spread out anywhere. You can't go pour it into a, a sink or something like that. And you can't go spreading it around everywhere. Because at the ordination, just before that, the host was placed in my hands and I was told, guard, receive this inheritance and guard it with your life because it will be demanded of you at the second coming of Christ. So every drop and every crumb is demanded of us to be accountable as we handle it and as we distribute it, in case you wonder why priests get so kind of touchy about communion. That's why. It's on our soul. But my challenge isn't any different than yours. Don't you face the same question every time you come to communion? Do you believe? Because the church offers you the answer, and it's the first words of your pre-communion prayers. I believe and confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this is truly your precious body, and this is truly your precious blood. So if you believe that, then you, like I, might have scratched your head and said, and I'm not, by the way, criticizing any other traditions. It's just what happened here in Pittsburgh, and I'm addressing it, because I've heard many questions about it. That our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, through their bishop here, have now said, mm, no more chalice. Now, they already had separated the chalice years ago, and they only receive a wafer in the form of a host. We don't do that. We receive both elements in here on a spoon. But you were allowed to, I think, optionally receive from the chalice. Father Radu can probably fill us in better on that. But they've said none of that, plus a few other things. But in our context, not judging their beliefs or their practices, in our context, this isn't possible. It's not possible to look and to say, I believe and confess that you are truly the Christ, and this is your body and blood, and then turn around and say, well, just in case, I, uh, I want to make sure I protect myself so I don't get sick from the weight, the very medicine of immortality that you have given me and you have commanded me to receive. So I want to offer you a couple of things today. And I'm going to preface it by saying, if you have questions, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. I just shared with you my questions. I just made a confession to you of my own struggles. You're not any... I'm not demanding you of anything of you anything more than I own, my experience myself. But there, there's a process that those questions lead to that have to take us to a place of proclaiming and believing and practicing our Orthodox Christian faith with our heart, our mind, and our soul. So, all of that leading up to a couple of things. Archbishop L.P. the Fotis recently offered the following. And it's about how we receive God's grace in the Orthodox Church. He said, as Orthodox Christians, we know that God uses material means to communicate his blessings and his presence to us. The grace-filled presence of icons, relics, holy water, blessing crosses, and objects, even the blessing hand of a priest, convey to the believer God's grace and energy. All of those are ways that the church has for from the beginning of the church, offered as vehicles, receptacles, ways of transmitting God's grace. Patriarch Daniel of Romania recently put out a statement as well, and as you can tell, a lot of these things are coming out in reaction to the whole coronavirus uh, scenario. And he was answering the questions of people who also challenged and said, like I am sure that there are people here challenged and say, I don't know if I should be receiving communion with all this stuff going around. It says that the Eucharist is never, ever a source of sickness and death, and he stands with every patriarch, 
every bishop, every archbishop, every priest that has ever served in the life of the Orthodox Church. We must firmly reaffirm the Orthodox belief that the Holy Eucharist is not and can never be a source of sickness and death, but a source of new life in Christ, of forgiveness of sins for the healing of soul and of body. That is why, while believers receive Holy Communion, we chant, receive the body of Christ, taste the fountain of immortality. But we still sometimes say, oh, that's good to hear from the church people. What do the rest of the people say? How about a woman who is at the University of Athens and a professor of internal medicine? And let's find a doctor who also shares our Christian beliefs. She says, Holy Communion is a sacrament. When you go to receive Holy Communion, you receive it because it is the body and blood of Christ. Either you believe it and you receive the Holy Communion, or you don't believe it. She's leaving the choice to you. If I think this can be a source of infection, then I don't believe it's the greatest sacrament. People who want to receive Holy Communion should not be afraid of the fact that it can transmit germs. That's from a internal medicine doctor and a Greek Orthodox Christian. Let's then go one more step afar and say, what about, who, don't know, who knows what they believe? Maybe a non-believer, maybe a believer, who knows? But a purely scientific analysis. So the very same CDC that is out issuing all sorts of proclamations today about what we should do, back in 1998 said this, the CDC reported there had never been an outbreak of infection related to the communion cup. There has never been a documented case of illness caused by the sharing of a chalice reported in the scientific literature. We have, as priests, visited leper colonies. We have visited hospitals. We have gone to nursing homes. We have gone to all sorts of places. None of us have ever gotten sick from communing of the chalice when we go to minister to those people. If you know of an instance, let me know. I've looked, I've looked, the Father Rado has looked. We haven't found a single instance. So then, what about somebody who was actually in the CDC? There's a pastor in New York. He's not Orthodox, but he's a Christian pastor. He was a CDC medical officer and a global health professor at Boston University. Then he went into the pastorate. And he says, we actually don't need less communion right now, we need more communion. Churches must trust sound theology, science, and public health instead of succumbing to rumors and hysteria from social media. Denominations, churches, and believers can play a vital role during outbreaks, epidemics, and other diseases. So what is our role as priests, as bishops, as believers, as the church? when everybody is kind of caught up in so much of this. Is there a safe place? It's right here. Because as the church sings during certain seasons for communion, receive the body of Christ, taste the fountain of immortality. So as a faithful and trustworthy doctor told me even just yesterday as I was prepping for this, I don't go to the church for medical advice, he says. I need something more from the church. And Archimandrite Ephrem from Greece, in addressing this issue, in the preface of a big, thick book called Experiences During the Divine Liturgy, leaves us with this. The Lord created his church on earth as a bride so that she would intercede for his children. He left us the great mystery of the Holy Eucharist in order to be cleansed, become holy, and thus become one with God. He has invited us all, some in their childhood, others in their middle age as well as old age. And as good as he is, he took hold of us like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings in order to make us partakers of his divine kingdom. Nothing repelled him, no ulcer, no wound, no illness, not even the deformity of spiritual phenomenon which may characterize our soul. What did Christ do for us? As a father, he accepted us. As a mother, he breastfed us. And as an unmercenary doctor, he took care of us and clothed us in the garment of adoption. 
in grace, therefore ignoring the heavenly debt of our trust, heavy debt of our trespasses. So we owe him infinite love and worship. Love should remain in the heart like a life-giving source, gushing forth springs of communion wine and streams of divine love. That is the message of our church from the beginning of its days to today with the fear of God, with faith, and with love. Draw near. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy, glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy, glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy, victorious martyrs of the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, Saint Demetrius, the righteous, Felix of Burgundy, Hermas, of the apostle of the Seventy, Paul, the confessor, Theophilactus, the confessor and bishop, the Holy Fathers of the Seventh Ecumenical Council, of our Father among the Saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and of all the saints, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect you all. Good morning. Okay. Yes, so we did pass the tray. I do have a couple of announcements, please. So first and foremost, um, may, I, may I please ask you to do church twice on one day? I know that's really hard, but we are hosting the Sunday of Orthodoxy today. Uh, for those of you who have boys that are in the altar, I need acolytes today at 4.30 so we can have a really nice procession. The other thing is we have Quite a few people, other Orthodox Christians, coming from the area. We have not one but two bishops. Bishop John Abdullah is the speaker and the celebrant. Bishop Melchizedek of the OCA will be here also. There will probably be 20, 30, 40 priests that are here as well. And uh, so, I got to tell you that as a priest, the most embarrassing thing that happens with the Sunday of Orthodoxy and when, it was when everybody is there but your own people. I've seen it in church, other churches before, and that's not Holy Trinity Church if we have anything to do with it, right? So, 4.30... We ask you to please come back here. It's a really beautiful celebration. It's not that long of a service, honestly. And, um, and then afterwards, there'll be a light Lenten reception in the uh, Grand Room. So please come back. Again, I really need the acolytes of so parents. Uh, please make sure. All right, a few other things. Goya has soup today, so buy your Lenten soup so you can enjoy that this week. Uh, little card and a bulletin announcement for Spanagopita. Spanagopita is going to be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Really trying to get a jump on things this week. So please come for that if you're able to. Um, also, there was in the Pangari, and if you didn't get one, you can take one so you have the information. The invitation to the ordination to the priesthood of our own Deacon George Athanasiu, which will take place on April 5th. That's not that far away. And there is an email there for you to make reservations for the luncheon. Now, this is on a Sunday, unfortunately. Don't everybody go, please, all right? <laughs> but, I mean, I at least need somebody here to help do the liturgy, right? But uh, if you, what we are going to do is our senior classes from Sunday school are doing a field trip because many of them have never seen, most of them, I think probably all of them have never seen an ordination to the priesthood. They probably saw the diaconate when Deacon George was here, but not the priesthood. So you'll hear information to church school parents about they'll be going down there. Uh, if any of you would like to attend as well, please send out your information there 
and, uh, and there's uh, reservations required for the luncheon. And that's going to be down in Canonsburg at All Saints, because the tradition is you get ordained to the priesthood at the community at which you will be serving. We, of course, have our normal Lenten services on Monday and Friday. We do not have pre-sanctified liturgy this week because of the clergy retreat, but now there's another reason. So we do have Compline on Monday and Salutations on Friday. Sadly, we have a funeral now on Thursday, a visitation on Wednesday and a funeral on Thursday. Presbytera Luella Costopoulos just recently fell asleep in the Lord, and uh, her funeral will be this week. Presbytera Luella was a presbytera because she was married to a man from this church, Father John Costopoulos. He was an engineer who got ordained later in life, served in Morgantown, West Virginia, died at a young age, unfortunately, and, um, and Presbytera carried that title, as they would, because she was married to a priest. Uh, she was in the choir for many years. So the uh, visitations will be here at Holy Trinity Church on Wednesday, 3 to 8, with the Trisayun at 7.30, and then Thursday morning visitation, 10 to 11, and we will do the funeral at 11 o'clock. So if you're able to come and offer your prayers for Presbytera, uh, either by the visitation or the uh, funeral, we invite you to do so. Is that it? Am I missing anything? Okay. I hope, really, genuinely, please, I hope to see you at 4.30 today. It's a really, really beautiful service. Please try to come back, uh, and uh, may I'll see you hopefully sometime other during the week, uh, the services or the funeral. Thank you. Music. Oh, wait a minute, sit down, sorry. <laughs> That's when I said, am I forgetting something? I knew I was forgetting something. So, ah, we'll take this one. Okay. You saw the announcements in the Herald and you've seen them in the bulletin about a new safety and security ministry that we have here at Holy Trinity Church. You're gonna be seeing something next week which is new. It is also a, in a sense, an experiment and a test run, so nobody panic. Uh, George Dickus and Karen Georgiatis are here to tell you about that, uh, and it is part of our response to uh, offer the appropriate um, protection, safety, security, and preparedness in all ways for the life of this church. So, Karen, George. Good morning. As the Parish Safety Committee, we'd like to elaborate on an announcement that was included in the Bulletin and the Herald regarding the upcoming presence of a McCandless Township off-duty police officer for Sunday and other services. A few years ago, there was a shooting in a church in South Carolina where nine people were killed. Since then, there have been several additional incidents in houses of worship, including the horrific shooting at the Pittsburgh Synagogue. After the South Carolina incident, a parishioner with two small children came to the parish council and asked, what are we doing to be prepared? A safety committee was formed, chaired by Jerry Valiant. Unfortunately, Jerry could not be with us today. The committee is comprised of ex-military, former officers, a security expert, and ordinary parishioners. The committee is looking into all aspects of safety including fire and other emergency exit procedures, electronic security systems, classes for CPR, and much more. The committee interviewed several companies that specialize in providing armed security. The committee looked very closely at all of the proposals and unanimous, unanimously recommended that we hire the off-duty McCandless Police especially since their presence would include a marked police vehicle. This recommendation was blessed by Father John and approved by the parish council. Starting next week, we will institute a few safety measures. First, after 9.40 a.m., all doors to the church and the hall will be locked, except for the main entrance to the church and the door by the office. This was recommended by all of the security companies to limit access to the church. Second, and remember there are going to be police out there, we ask that no one parks along the road leading to the church. We have plenty of parking spots available. In the event of a medical fire or any emergency, 
We do not want to hinder emergency vehicles from getting to the church. Finally, as mentioned, an off-duty McCandless police officer will be at the church out front here from 8.30 to 12.30. He will monitor, regularly canvass the property, and provide a deterrent. A big part of that deterrent, as Karen mentioned, will be his police vehicle. Naturally, all things come with a cost. A budget item for security has been added to the 2020 budget. The cost we have to pay the McCandless Township for the police officer's presence is $80 an hour, or $320 per Sunday. The private security firms were actually more expensive and required that we sign long-term contracts without flexibility. We want to be clear. There have been no threats, and we do feel that our Holy Trinity campus is safe. Unfortunately, we have to recognize that other houses of worship likely felt the same way, but nonetheless were targets of these insane events. We're trying to be proactive without being overly alarming. The safety committee is going to continue to meet regularly, to try to meet with our community and our place of worship, to make our community and our place of worship as safe as possible. Is there any questions? Thank you. All right, so I, yes. No, the parking spaces are fine, just not along the, not along the curb, along the curb. Along the curb, right. correct. Thanks, Al. So, no doubt, thank you, Karen, and thank you, George. Oh, you can stay here. So, um, I have no doubt that there actually are questions, and that's okay if you don't want to put your hand up and ask them now. Karen and George and the Parish Council will be in the coffee hour today. Please ask them or contact any of them or myself after, uh, after today. Uh, I, I want you to clearly understand, and thank you, Karen, for, um, for introducing it this way. This is in response to concerns addressed by parishioners. This is not a mandate from the Parish Council or a dictate from anybody. It is a response that was deemed by all to be appropriate and simply proactive. We have a General Assembly coming up in May, so your feedback will be received there as well. We may, and George mentioned, we're not in a long-term contract. We might decide a month from now, two months from now, no, we tried it, we don't like it. We might decide we want to keep it, but remember, the Parish Council represents you, and General Assembly is the, is the place where that feedback takes place too, which is going to be, according to the last General Assembly request, an evening General Assembly. The Assembly notice went out in the bulletin. So please give your feedback. Please don't make up your mind about this in some way, maybe incorrectly, about what it's all about. Talk to the representatives. Talk to the Parish Council. This is not intended in any way to change the character, the life of Holy Trinity Church. Our goal is to maintain openness and welcome and hospitality in every possible way. So, again, please provide your feedback, please share your ideas and your opinions, and uh, we will see this developing as we go along. Thank you. Yes, many, as George said, many churches actually are doing this right now, and so we're, we're really not out of the mainstream. Thank you.